So Warrain is a central suburb of Hobart. Originally, uh, it was created as a housing commission suburb. A lot of the houses are all very similar, uh, with many floor plans being pretty closely related to each other. 65 Bass Street is your kind of typical Warrain weatherboard. Uh, it's a four bed, one bath, built in 1954. It's untouched for the most part, so lino floors, flower wallpaper, overall just really tired. Uh, however, these homes have good bones, which you hear a lot, but this one's been standing for over 60 years and behind the ugly carpet and the horrible masonite walls, uh, hardwood frames and tazoak floorboards. And once polished, they, they always come up a treat. So the house sits on a block of 756 square metres. Uh, this was important because I spent months looking at properties with development potential. Uh, this one's zoned general residential. So in order to add another house or unit or what have you, you need a minimum of 325 square metres per dwelling. So what I did is I just refined my searches online to include a number of suburbs in Hobart, uh, which were within my price range. These were Sorrel, Glenorchy, Warren, Mornington, and maybe a few others. And importantly, only properties that were on at least 750 square metres. Uh, this was only one prerequisite of a few that I had to tick off. Other factors include where the house is situated on the block, clearance from the eaves to the side boundary. I think it's at least 3.2 metres off the top of my head. But this is to allow a wide enough driveway down the side. Uh, oh, and easements, so things like underground cables and pipes that may run through the property. And these are just a few things you should be wary of or looking at checking off your list when searching for a viable property to develop. Now what's great about Lorraine is not only the size of the blocks, but it's one of the few remaining affordable inner city suburbs in Hobart. It's got all the amenities within five minutes. So this property was advertised for offers over 379000 uh, I'll put an offer in of 380k, um, which was accepted the next day. Stamp duty and legals were 10k, so came to 390 in total. At the time, I had 90 already in my bank account, 80 of which came from a two-lot subdivision in Carlton between 2018 and 2019. Um, I was essentially a silent partner there. I sat on the proceeds for about 18 months, uh, and in that time I didn't do much. Well, that's not true. I traveled a fair bit uh, all around Europe for a few months, South Africa for about six months, and Bali for a little while. But I sat on my ass for the most part, which I regret. Not the traveling part. Anyway, with this 80K that I had, I used it as a, the down payment. I believe I paid 15K as the deposit. From there, I borrowed a bit over 300K from the bank on a variable 2.8% interest rate. And my repayments work out to be about 300 a week. Uh, luckily, I was approved for that loan because at the time I was applying for a backup loan and I was denied it. <laughs> for the renovation, I budgeted about 40K uh, with 10K contingency, so 50K to be safe. Now, the median house price for Lorraine is about what I purchased this house for. However, there's a place just two minutes up the road, very similar specs to this one, and it's advertised for offers over 460. Now, it's also unrenovated. So once this one's nicely renovated, judging from comparable sales and taking into account the way the Hobart market has been tracking, if I'm being optimistic, uh, it should reflect being worth closer to 500K when I plan to sell it in about a year's time. So with my mortgage of 300 a week, and other costs like maintenance, insurance, and rates, uh, my costs work out to be around 450 a week. Now, I'm not really looking to turn a profit here just yet, so if I can tenant it out for 450 a week, which is easily feasible, uh, that'll take care of my holding costs. As I'll be claiming this as my principal place of residence, I'll most likely turn to Gumtree or the likes to source tenants on a rolling monthly lease. So in terms of the renovation, the shed and the carport will go, uh, we'll be constructing a new little deck in the courtyard. The kitchen and laundry will have new joinery. And we'll be adding a master bathroom and walk-in robe to the end bedroom. 
The current heat pump that we've got in here at the moment is pretty dated, so we're removing that and putting a new heat pump system in. Now, like I said earlier, the whole reason why I bought this property was because of its development potential. So original dwelling at the front, new dwelling to go at the back. Uh, because of the irregular shape of the block, I've opted for a design with a pretty small footprint. Uh, it'll be something around 100 square meters, but two story. Uh, it'll be a two bed, two bath, with a garage using pretty modest, yet still attractive materials and design. I found a place five minutes uh, in the next suburb over that I've kind of modeled mine off. And I believe that one sold for a bit over 500K uh, and I've linked that below. For the new dwelling out the back, I've budgeted around 320K for the build and another 20 for planning and approvals, which will probably take around four months, uh, which will bring me to about April. From there, I'll have a builder lined up to commence work shortly after. And with any luck, a small and simple build probably shouldn't take any longer than four, four months. So if all goes to plan, I'll have my first development complete by around September and hopefully fit some travel in along the way. Now, as I'm recording this, the government has just extended the building stimulus package. Uh, I'll bet 10K less now, it's still 15K that I'd otherwise not have. So I don't have any formal certifications or a degree. Uh, I've just used resources that are available to everyone. And there are many that you could and should use before even looking at the property in person. So you can check the zoning on iPlan and the list map. Uh, draftsmen and council planners are generally pretty happy to help from my experience. And you should also talk to as many real estate agents as you can. Um, I spent a fair bit of time educating myself. So listening to podcasts a fair bit. Uh, and also reading books. I've linked some below if you're interested. I'm a pretty introverted person by nature, so doing this is a bit out of my comfort zone. And bear in mind, this is my first time doing this. So if I've said anything that isn't 100% spot on, forgive me, I'm listening and I'm learning. Uh, that being said, if you have any questions about anything that I haven't covered, uh, be sure to ask. Uh, I think that covers pretty much everything. So thanks for watching. Uh, I'll try and do a few of these along the way to keep myself accountable. And with that said, adios, catch you later. Boom.